Hey everyone, this week we're asking what's the difference between content-aware fill and generative fill when it comes to removing objects from your photography. So in last week's video I shared this image where I explained I'd removed the people using Photoshop's generative fill tool and someone asked me why I chose to use generative fill and not content-aware fill. So I thought I'd make this video to explain the reasons why. So I've been talking about generative fill quite a lot in videos recently. And you can go back and watch this video up top if you want a wider overview of what it's capable of. And you probably already know it can do things like generate new imagery from text prompts and things like that. But one of the most powerful features of the tool is that it can remove objects from a scene. And in that way it is quite similar to how content-aware fill works. And that's been around since Adobe CS5, I believe. So why did I use generative fill instead of content-aware fill? And what's the difference between the two? Let's dive in and find out. So we'll start with content-aware fill. Content-aware fill works by analyzing your image and then trying to find the pixels that most closely match the area that you're trying to fill. So we can demonstrate that with this image. I'm in Lightroom at the moment, but I can bring this into Photoshop Beta. And I am using Photoshop Beta because Generative Fill is not present in the general release version of Photoshop yet. So we would normally press Command and E or Control and E on your keyboard to bring this into Photoshop. But because I'm using Beta, I'm going to right click on the image, go to Edit In, and then I'm going to choose Photoshop Beta there. So if you don't have that in your list, you can add that by coming up to Lightroom Classic, Settings, and then within External Editing, you can choose a second software here by clicking Choose. And then you can see here I've chosen Photoshop Beta. So we'll go ahead and open that up. So here we are in Photoshop Beta. And what I'm going to do is remove this little twiggy branch thing that's just sticking up here, kind of draws your eye towards it and it's not really adding anything to the scene so let's get rid of it. I'm going to use the lasso tool but you can use any kind of selection tool really. I'm just going to draw around the little branch and I'm going to come up to edit, content aware fill and I will get this split pane window up here. So you can see on the right this is the result that we're going to get and on the left here we've got where it is sampling the pixels from. So all of this green area is the area of the image that it's analyzing and you can you can add to this or remove it. You see here I'm removing just by clicking and kind of brushing over that area. If I press Alt on my keyboard I can add that back in and choose new areas to sample from. And that will alter how the result appears over here on the right. There are a couple of options in here that I recommend you try experimenting with and that is scale and mirror. Sometimes clicking those will give you better or sometimes worse results. But it's always worth just trying them out. And you'll notice, I'm just going to click OK here, it does a pretty good job and that's because it's quite a repetitive pattern with all of the bluebells and the grass and things. Content Aware Fill does work really well when you've got these repetitive elements. But let's have a look at a different image. If I just go back to Lightroom now. So I'm just going to come to this image over here. This was an image I captured of a band. And what we're going to try and do is remove this guy here over on the left. So once again, we'll bring that into Photoshop Beta. Once again, I'm going to take my lasso tool and just draw around the edge. And you'll notice I'm not being exact with this. I'm not going right to the edge of where his body meets the background. I'm leaving a little bit of space just around his body and we'll come right back up here 
So if we go to Edit Content Aware Fill Now, we'll see what that does. So you see, we've got nowhere near as good a result this time. You can see what it's doing. Like I said, it analyzes the image. It tries to find the closest matching pixels. And in this particular image, it's decided that this guy here is gonna be a good replacement for this area. Obviously, that's not gonna work. <laughs> it just looks really strange. And we can manipulate this to some extent. Before generative fill was around, you would kind of try to tweak this by rubbing out bits of areas so obviously we don't want him to be cloned, so we'll, we'll rub out that area, we'll rub out all of the other people, so that we're not going to get those repeated. And you see on the right, that starts to update now. But it's still not looking great. We've got this really weird kind of area that extends this rocky area but we haven't got a very well defined edge, it just kind of blurs into the sky. And I can assure you from having used Content to Airfill quite a lot, that no matter how long you play around with this, you might get a better result, but you're not gonna get a good result. So I'm just gonna click cancel on that, and I'm gonna show you a generative fill. So like I said, this is only in the beta version of Photoshop at the moment, but it will be coming to the release version in the near future, I would imagine. Click on this button here, Generative Fill, and in here we can type something if we want to create new imagery. But like I said in this video, what we're going to do is just compare how this works to remove objects compared to Content to Air Fill. So all we do instead is just click Generate on this button, and that's going to think about it, analyze the scene in a similar way to Content to Air Fill, but then it's going to make up new pixels rather than copy them or clone them from other areas. It actually references a bank of, well, millions of other images that it's already kind of trained itself on. And it will reference those as well as analyzing the image and come up with what it thinks is the best match to fill in that area. So there's three different options that you can choose from by clicking back and forward through these arrows. And as you can see, they're all absolutely fantastic. Compared to what we got from Content to Air Fill, it's just night and day different. So we can also see how that works on the first image as well. If we just hide that layer, I'll use my lasso tool. Again, Generative Fill, click Generate. And it's worked very well there as well. Probably better than with content to air fill. That's content to air fill, and that is generative fill. So you see here, it's a little bit blurry. We've just got a kind of a blur patch there, which doesn't look great. I mean, you're not gonna notice from far away, but up close, you can see that. If we go to the generative fill version, it's just so seamless. It just adds those extra pixels, works out the content of the scene, and just generates it to look exactly like what you've got in your image, it's just a perfect match. So we're gonna look at one final image, if I just go back to Lightroom now, and that's this one. So you will have seen this in my recent Germany videos if you watched those. This is at the Koenig Z in Germany, and I'm going to bring that into Photoshop Beta once again. So what we're gonna do with this example is extend our image and this is particularly useful for, say, graphic designers where they need to fill an area of a page and the current image is not quite wide enough or something. It's also really good for photographers when you want just a slightly different composition and you don't have enough pixels or information in your image to extend to the left or right or top or bottom. So what we're going to do is click on the crop tool, just pull this out to the left and there is actually a new feature in the current version of Photoshop Beta which will automatically just fill this area in for you. So if I just, you'll see up here we've got Generative Expand selected. If I just click Generate now, you see that does a fairly good job of filling in that area. However, I have noticed when using the Generative Expand 
we do get this kind of line just down between where the old image was and the new one. However, if I just hide that layer there, use my rectangular marquee tool, select this area, just slightly overlap here. And if I click generative fill now and generate, this was the way to do it before generative expand. I find that gives a much cleaner result. You see there's no line there now. And you can see just how well this works. We've got a really long letterbox type image now, kind of a panorama. And all of this over here is completely made up. It doesn't exist. So you do have to be aware of that and the ethical issues. And you need to be completely upfront with your viewers when they're looking at your images that you've generated this stuff. But it is fantastic what it can do. It really is amazing. And if we compare that now to using Content Aware Fill, I can go up here. I uh, just need to click on my background layer. Edit Content Aware Fill. So you can see already here in the preview, not looking great. It's kind of selected areas that it thinks would match. But really, we've got mountains right up here. We've got really blurry edges, bits that just don't seamlessly match. We've got a bit of a floating mountain here. So a little island down here. I don't know what that's doing down there. It's just nowhere near as good as the generative fill versions. So what's the difference between content aware fill and generative fill when it comes to object removal in your photography? Well, basically, generative fill is just better. <laughs> it just gives more realistic looking results, which is ironic considering they're not real, they're generated. But they're just so plausible, they fit seamlessly into your image, they blend in, it works out exactly where to put the elements to line up with the elements that intersect with the area that you're trying to fill. And it works out all the lighting and colors. Whereas content to air fill, particularly when it comes to removing subjects that have a clearly defined area and are not part of a repetitive structure in your image. It just doesn't work as well. It tries to fill in the gaps with bits cloned from your image that don't really work and then you've got blurry areas. There's just no seamless matchup like you get with the generative fill. So there may be rare occasions where I would use content to air fill when I've got that repetitive pattern and perhaps there might be a situation where Generative fill is just creating something a bit unusual. Sometimes it just has a moment and creates just a, a weird object or something in your area that you want to remove. And in those very rare situations, content to air fill might be better. And there are also ethical issues. Some people might not want to use AI generated imagery. But for me personally, as long as I'm being upfront about it and not trying to deceive people, I'm really happy to use these tools, particularly in situations like this where I'm trying to remove elements from my scene. So going forward, generative fill is definitely going to be my tool of choice for removing objects. So that's it for another video. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you have liked it in any way or you found it useful, please just give me a thumbs up down below. As you know, that really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. It gets the video more widely shared, helps the channel to grow, and that way I can make more videos and hopefully you'll like those as well. If you watch every week, like I said, I do really appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in. I know it takes a lot of time, but it is great that you're there to tune in and leave the comments like you always do. And if you're new to the channel and you're not yet subscribed and you'd like to do so, you can always just click down there on the big red button or on this picture of me over here. And that way you'll stay up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. There's a new video every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. UK time. So I hope you'll join me next week for the next one. But until then, thanks a lot, everyone. And bye for now.